Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to my SummerSlam predictions video. What I've been doing the past few months is offering you guys the opportunity to put your predictions into the comments in this video and if anybody manages to beat me then I have been sending them a key ring. Admittedly though the last couple of months that has kind of fallen a bit flat so I'm not going to be doing that this month but if anybody is interested in potentially putting forward any bad wrestling matches that are ideally on the network so that I've got access to them. If anybody does perform better than me with their predictions then they can pick an awful wrestling match for me to have to sit through and I will do a reactions video to that. Again all you guys have got to do is leave your predictions and maybe a suggestion for an awful match, say a giant Gonzalez versus Undertaker from WrestleMania 9, or something along those sorts of lines. I leave it up to you guys. But for now, let's get on with my predictions. Starting off with the Cruiserweight title match, as it will probably be on the pre show, Drew Gulak defending against Oni Lorkin. Lorkin has obviously been on 205 Live for a while now and is finally getting a chance to shine at a pay-per-view. Although I still sort of see him more as an NXT guy. Gulak has only just really won the belt so I think it makes sense for him to carry on with the belt. The only way I can really see Lorkin winning is if they are planning on integrating 205 Live into NXT which potentially might be happening by the time SmackDown goes to Fox. But we will have to watch this space with that. But right here, right now, I'm banking on a Drew Gulak win to retain the belt. As there is reportedly only a one hour pre-show, that is probably all the pre-show matches we will have. So let's get on to the main card. Starting with Charlotte Flair taking on Trish Stratus. Um... I mean, it makes more sense for Flair to win this, although I don't think she needs to. I also don't know if she particularly loses anything in not winning this. And there have been a few murmurings of Trish making kind of a semi-return, maybe until WrestleMania, something like that. So I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and suggest maybe a Trish Stratus win. We are also in... Canada so all beating Trish will do is kind of get a massive heel reaction from Charlotte but I don't really think she needs one at this point. It's a weird one because normally the legend puts over the younger star but Flair really has done more in her time already than Stratus kind of ever did and it would be nice for Trish to still be around when Mickey James comes back from injury and they have some kind of mini program together. Who knows? So yeah, I'm going to kind of buck the obvious here and go with Trish to win. Next up, we have AJ Styles taking on Ricochet for the US title. I'm presuming that Gallows and Anderson will be at ringside for this match as they were before. AJ needs to keep hold of the belt. Ricochet can hopefully kind of move away from this program and go on and kind of have a few other feuds with other people potentially then taking them onto pay-per-view but maybe not maybe just having some decent raw matches but i think if he maybe wins this match via a disqualification something like that say aj uses a weapon or gallows and anderson get involved or attack ricochet or the referee so that AJ Styles retains the belt. Ricochet still gets the rub from the win, sort of. Because I feel if Ricochet wins the belt back, this feud is just going to keep going on and on until Doomsday. And it needs to kind of end. Next up, we have Dolph Ziggler getting squashed by Goldberg. That was nice and easy, and probably longer than the match itself. Kevin Owens takes on Shane McMahon. And if Kevin Owens loses, then he has to quit WWE. Hmm. Now, normally with these, they do a quit Raw or quit SmackDown. And you're kind of in 
inclined to go with that then to get them over to the other program. I have a feeling that Kevin Owens is going to win this match and probably prolong the feud slightly and maybe down the line what would be quite fitting is a Hell in a Cell match taking this whole thing full circle from when Kevin Owens had issue with Shane McMahon a couple of years ago. We then have basically both careers on the line so that we can finally write Shane McMahon off of TV. So for now... We're going with a Kevin Owens win, hopefully leading to a career versus career match of some description that will then get rid of Shane McMahon. Bailey defends the SmackDown Women's title against Ember Moon, and the build for this match has been absolutely terrible. Ember's been made to look like a complete idiot, and not even really deserving of the title opportunity. She just got kind of picked by Bailey and then just lost at every turn, apart from that stupid roll-up victory against Charlotte Flair. I kind of hope that we see Bailey retain here. Ember can kind of go away a little bit and then actually be built up to be a credible contender for the belt. Because if she wins here, it doesn't make Bailey look great because she's losing to effectively a nobody. And she still seems very delicate as a champion herself because of the bad booking that she has suffered for most of her time on the main roster. The only credible way I can see Bailey losing this match is with a Sasha Banks return and turn against Bailey. But I think we've kind of jumped the shark with that now. So for now, Bailey to retain. On the Raw side of things, Becky Lynch is taking on Natalia in a submission match. Essentially, Disarma versus Sharpshooter. And if we go with the logic of Trish winning, we can get away with Natalia losing. I think when Becky finally does drop the belt, it needs to be to somebody kind of big time. And I'm afraid to say that that is definitely not Natalia. So we're going to have to go realistically here with a Becky Lynch retention. Finn Balor is taking on Bray Wyatt as the Fiend. It's a shame this isn't Fiend versus Demon. But maybe they, this will sort of build to a Fiend-Demon match later on in the year. It's Bray's first match since the whole Firefly Funhouse return. He's got to win this. There's no other way around it. It's got to be the most predictable result on the entire card. Kofi Kingston defends the WWE title against Randy Orton. And this is the first big challenge, I guess, Kofi has had for the belt. And although it pains me to say it, I'm kind of getting bored of his title run now. I think the kind of lack of decent challenges has really hurt him. The lack of any kind of meaningful storyline within those feuds has hurt him because he's just been portrayed as this lucky champion. I think a win against Randy Orton would really, really help solidify this title reign and he really does need to win this. But part of me thinks they are going to give the win to Randy and put the belt back on him. I kind of hope that isn't the case, but that is what I'm going to go with as my prediction for this match. And it would kind of spell the end, really, for Kofi in the main event scene. Because I doubt he's going to be able to get back to these heights again, because it's taken so long for him to get there. Maybe he then manages to win the belt straight back the month after against Orton possibly but I don't know I kind of want him to win but I don't think he will unfortunately I'm, I'm banking here on a Randy Orton win as bad as that is and finally we have Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins for the Universal title I do not care about Seth Rollins in the main event scene anymore really not bothered he was on top of the world at WrestleMania and I now just don't care. He's kind of almost become the pseudo Baron Corbin of Raw. Just everything he's involved in is just there. I don't care. I think Brock's going to win and retain the belt. 
hopefully then Seth can kind of naff off for a little while. Maybe if he gets completely pummeled to a pulp, he can kind of be injured for a couple of months and we can maybe learn to care about him again and we can get somebody else involved in the kind of main event scene on the face side of things on Raw. Not really any kind of clue as to who that could be. B, maybe a Braun Strowman, I guess, is kind of the most logical choice. And maybe it's finally his time. He is kind of a Paul Heyman guy, supposedly. But yeah, for now, Brock Lesnar to win and retain the Universal title. And hopefully we don't see Seth Rollins for a little while. Because him as champion was really, really uninspiring. And I think going back to that is just there. So there we go, they are my predictions for SummerSlam 2019. Please let me know your predictions in the comments below. And if you have got any suggestions for awful matches you want to see me have to suffer through if I lose this, then please put those in the comments below as well. And yeah, if I do really badly, I will do a reactions video to watching an awful, awful match. But until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.